Welcome back, everybody. Well, MLG Pro League this is going to be the last game of the day for Europe, and I'll finish off the best of two between Flipside Tactics and E-Frag. I'm still Helium, and with me is Metas. Hello. Yeah, How your you hellos doing? are getting uh, weirder and weirder. That's the plan. All right. Oh, but getting like... more delirious as night the night time goes on. Although I guess for you it's more like afternoon, right? Yeah, I don't even I don't know, man. What is time? <laughs> well, this is an interesting pistol round for me, Frag. Typically they like to go all in together and just try and storm a site, but Dreamer is playing the lurk here, waiting for someone to push on three while the bomb is still back next to the fountain. But flip side stacking three players on eight. Not giving too much away themselves, and the USP can really come into fruition here at long range. The one tap potential is massive. We saw this from flip side on train as well. So E frag need to be careful. This first frag could be absolutely crucial. And they only have one flashbang to play with the E frag, so it's not a case they can smoke smoke off an area and then force through. They're trying to fake this onto B. Two players pushing on through. It's going to be NKL and also Dreamer, but it's Victor who's going in by himself. Lands the headshot. Will that it comes back with a one of his own. If he can pick up the second, it would be massive for the CTs. It's not going to happen, though. But the bomb is moving now onto the A side. While well, Flipside try and retreat back towards their spawn. And Efrag in a very strong position. Markloff misses his chance. Oh, my God. Down and what? trying to get to second. How is that even possible? I don't know. Markolov uh, lost his... Uh, yeah... XD, indeed. He lost the magic they had on train. Apparently Dreamer did not. Well, I guess he kind of lost it near the end of that train match. Like we said, only a couple kills in those last, like, six or so rounds. But starts off with a big 3k. And whether he got that or not, the round is probably secured. Um, they push on to A just as the rotations are being made, so they catch one out in the open. And I was getting very nervous as a... I can't remember quite who it was was pushing in with just four bullets in that Glock, but they find another headshot. And then they still didn't reload, and they had two bullets. But at that point, it didn't matter because Dreamer stepped up in the other site. So, one to zero, and not too much of a force buy coming in. CZ, 5-7, some armor, and a scout. A world edit. Definitely enough to work off of the flip side. And Efrag really committing fully into this round with the Galil and AK buy up. So if Flipside can get some work done here, there's plenty of weapons for them to fall back on. Again, no slow approach, maybe Efrag waiting for some aggression from the CTs to try and get information, put themselves in good stead. They're probably worried in case it's a stack in bathroom, but typically a lot of teams will do this with pistols. Try and close off the range advantage that the AKs will have over you. But that's not the case, Flipside are playing much more passive. Blade though has just moved into bathroom. With the P250, Victor is checking every single corner, so it's very likely he'll check this one as well. Goes up on the bench, and that should give him the advantage, but Blade still gets the kill. He will get traded out from Spider, who takes down two, but now Davkos comes in with the CZ. And only 25 seconds to play with Davkos and Bondic both come in with frags. This is huge for Flipside. 2v2 scenario now, and the bomb's been dropped on the site. Yeah, time also starting to get really, really low. Bondic still trying to hold off behind Optimus here, but finally Intel pushes, gets the frag. Bomb going down now. I think it started at about nine seconds. Yeah, planted there at six. Mark left four HP and a Deagle. Hoping that someone's going to maybe jump peek this. Oh my gosh. So what is this actually going to happen? I look like an is content to sit there. Mark left now going to try to do something to push forward. Just find a kill. Boss that man on the truck. Whoa, there's the one, Deke. There's what? another one onto NKL. And he actually gets it done. Has been and he's got it. Win. We had to get, build the suspense up there. Yeah. Close. What a fantastic 1v2 clutch from Markle. 4 HP, as you said. Unbelievable play from him. I can't. I don't even, man. Efrag must be sick to their stomach right now. Because as I said, they fully committed into that round. It was AKs and Galils. Not much to fall back on. Yes, they get the bomb plant, so it's Tech 9 and armor. And we saw on train as well when they got the, in a similar position when they got the bomb planted in this round, they went for an identical force buy again. So I'm expecting to see a lot more aggression here from Efrag, but flip side. Markov again, man, in a massive clutch scenario, right? He pulled off the 1v3, I think it was on train on CT side. This guy has shown up today. Yeah, and he ended up getting a 4 round too, with that AK outside. That was crazy. 
And yeah, I don't know. You don't expect to lose that. They probably realized Markolov was low. So they, they kind of give them a peek, but maybe they could have been a bit more passive and, and stayed hidden. And then when it came down to the 1v1, same story there, I guess. But here we go. Bomb is planted already. It's into a 3-on-3. Three -three. Uh, in terms of weaponry, it's about even. Some of those pistols, and I guess AK and a P90, but it's Dreamer who strikes first. He brings down World Edit. Bonix there for the trade, then Bumble with the FAMAS. It's now Markolov once again by himself. And this time he's got a kid. He will be spotted. And Spy Leader burning, burning, burning. Has to back away, and Markolov has him funneled into the monster drain and just takes a shot with the deagle once again and pulls out the clutch. Can almost guarantee you you fight on the buy again here. The fact that they took four weapons away from Flipside and got a bomb plant, like, this should be a buy. Yeah, and they've got, I mean, they can pull AKs out of this one anyways. Yeah, they got a choice to make. Do you want to go for AKs or do you want to go for Tech 9 kind of armor hybrid? And they're, they're thinking long and hard about this as well. But it's going to be the AKs. This leaves them with uh, fewer grenades to play with. Bubble actually had $400 and he didn't go for a smoke, which for me may be a bit of a mistake. I know he's their Roper, but $400, like, that's not much to fall back on, and an extra smoke could have been huge for his team. Or a couple of flashbangs, you can see them pushing in, though. The entry of frags, it does not matter if you're landing the frags left, right, in center. That was quite a lineup. It was, and then Kale and Bob, you can see they both smarted after that one. They, they were hurting, but no frags came as a result, so the E-frag with almost the perfect take on B-side, and... This is something that we experienced plenty of times yesterday, Joey. They're very, very proficient at this strat. Yeah, I mean, sometimes they would still try to force that, that B play. They'd push through a smoke and maybe get caught off guard. But if it's not smoked, like, you got to watch out. You're going to die if you're playing B. It's kind of just how it works. And Spy Leader actually sneaking around. We'll find World Edit, who was hiding off the, at the tree in Long A. And Bondic just on one of the uh, many stairs over in those A stairs. Actually, the, the one closest down to the B site. He'll be alright. Is he going to go in and maybe try to find a better gun? I think that's the play, isn't it? Yeah, let's get the AK. Sneaky. It's likely he'll be keeping this AK because he'll be the only player that has armor this round. So it makes the most sense with the flash and the smoke and the decoy, plus the defuse kit. Now, interesting enough, when we watched Hellraisers yesterday playing against Defrag, Angel managed to save himself weapon a few times, and typically he played very close off in the bathroom, which is where Bondic is going right now. I feel like Bondic is probably going for a more aggressive peek, though. He had a very good spawn for this. I was going to say, if he picks himself up a couple kills, they're uh, definitely worthwhile. Angel played much more passive, was actually holding angle at will that it is right now. And a couple times with the Famasis that he was able to save, he got two or three kills by himself. So it's a decision to make for flip side. One, maybe they are... Uh, they, they decided wrong one, but I can definitely understand where Bondic was going with that. As it stands though, Efrag should have this round pretty convincingly. And this could even be a double eco for Flipside. Their economy is pretty bad. Yep, it hurts to lose these early rounds from the CT side. Spine Leader will not be caught off guard by Markolov. Dreamer brings down Davkos, and now it's only World that it's still holding on and you know, in a position where, you know, maybe the rifle, that one rifle would have been better suited. Because even if you go up as a bond, you can find that opening pick to someone back at Fountain. It's not like anyone on your team can ever get over there and pick up that weapon. Where if, if, if they push into you and get caught in a crossfire and, and some other people with pistols are nearby, then they can scoop it up. But whatever, try to go aggressive, get in their face, start off with a kill, make the other team sweat. I mean, you can't really disagree with that either. Uh, but, of course, none of that happening really that round. E-Frag just farm on right through it, and like you said, double eco coming out for flip side, so that's got to hurt. Yep, definitely going to be hurting them. CZ, P250, not much else to play with here from flip side. I mean, it's really Markolov's fault, right? Because when he clutches two rounds in a row like that, that means only one person has survived on your CT side, which means money is so tight so that when you do lose, you're just so incredibly broken. Blame Markolov, man. Dude went ham. Some next level blaming. That clutch was so, so good, though. I, I, I honestly still can't believe he pulled that off. Yeah, I mean, either. I was not expecting that in the slightest. Especially without the kit. But here's Victor trying to work in the bathrooms. A lot of people, four people posted up as we can see through that wall. Violator now gonna on the outside of the bathroom. And on overpasses banana there. Do you like to call it? Yeah, some people are very confused by that uh, that call, but I think it makes sense overall.
We'll yeah, let it right with you. corner. You got 18 HP, not much of a hope, not much of a chance, and well, he gets picked off from Victor, he's hungry for more frags. Very nearly team kills. And it's still a play there, it's that fast, there's one frag, it's a couple oh, plays, that was almost very a low. Frag too. Very, very low indeed. He's gonna spot the second player. The problem is now that he's running out of bullets, but there's the AK-47. And if he can get this next kill onto Dreamer, this is doable. There's still plenty of time left on the bomb. NKL is on 100% of his HP, but he's been spotted, he just needs to play the time now. And he peeks again! Why? This is close. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Davikos, he takes the ace as well. Ace! Flipside, Davikos killed the entire enemy team and defused the bomb without a kit. Absolutely ridiculous. Flipside are... I don't know if lucky is the right word. Really fortunate, perhaps, to, to have like any rounds at all. I mean, sick clutch from Davkos, but NKL, I said, all he has to do is play the time and he went peeking. And that cost him his life and it cost him a round. A key round as well. These mistakes can really build up big. Let's hope yeah, NKL I mean, doesn't let that get to him. Definitely some mistakes. That's why I didn't want to call it luck, but... I mean, it's certainly rounds that you would never expect anyone to lose. That was, that was too much. And I mean, smokes, man. They can be deadly. Davkos got that ace pretty much while just lurking around in smokes in the A site while people were planting. And the other members of his team were being dealt with. Hey, it's a team game. Spy leader's already down, though. 5v4 in favor of Flipside, who would uh, like to maybe get away with a bit cleaner of a round and not have to uh, always come down to these. Heart pumping scenarios. Well, then it's on the prowl again. First frag goes down, that's Spy Leader. NKL tagged up, I believe that's the player in long. Indeed, it is. Taking a lot of damage through that smoke, but he's gonna push it. He's hungry to make amends for that previous mistake, and he only gets one frag for his troubles. And now it's all on Dream Up. The man, the talisman from the last map of Train. Hasn't had quite the same start here, but still respectable 7-3 scoreline. 20 seconds on the timer. Question is, does he want to just straight up save this AK, or does he want to die before time? Like, does he believe he can save this weapon? Uh, I mean, he does have three grand. Saving on T-Site's always awkward, right? And, of course, you then run the risk of still being alive when time runs out, maybe going down, and then not having a gun, and not having earned any money, but looks like he is going to save it. That minimap disappears, which is actually really annoying, but he'll uh, he'll be alright. No one's even near him. He's good to go. The rest of his team are fine to rebuy as well. And flip side, keeping that economy going. 9.3k on Dav cost. The only really wealthy player on his team. And here come the AK-47s once more. The economy's in the place as well with the round loss bonus. Going to be coming in soon. Uh, Efrag may be able to buy up next round, depending on what happens in this one. If they can get a bomb down, I'm pretty sure they will buy back up again. Even if it includes a couple tech lines. So Flipside just trying to play uh, slow and steady here. Not going to go for too much information. The only aggressive players will let it, but that's understandable. He's got the AWP and he's on long, and three players are coming through on him right now. Tight on the right side of long. And you can see right now from his perspective that he wants no part of this. He's just going to back away and play safe. And that's the correct play. Yeah, and that's what uh, Efrag was hoping that they could find a kill out at longer, and maybe now towards these bathrooms, because we can see the bomb is just sitting outside of B, so they're trying to get a pick for some rotations and more or less get a fake uh, into that B site. So they're still sitting tight. Also, if you find a kill, you might uh, get one of those CTs to push through B, which and then run into those two players sitting there as well. Can't quite find anything yet. Bondic and uh, Bubble standing almost right next to each other on the opposite side of these walls. Molotov will go out. Victor thinks about extinguishing it, but decides to keep on to the smoke for uh, other uses as Victor takes some damage through the wall. Missing some shots here with that op. And there's Bonic from behind. Worked his way around the outside wall of the bathroom. Came in through that other uh, entrance. Davkos has brought down NKL. And flip side with a 4 on 3 advantage, but now it's even up 3 on 3. Bubble taking damage in the back, but does not go down. And the bomb to be planted in B. So right now, kind of a two man post plant. You got Bubble lurking around. He's actually going to come down from behind as Dreamer sprays down two and World Edit. That's like the round of missed op shots for World Edit. 
Must have missed like five. That's really call them out, but just saying, that can make a difference. Well, I think you've got to you've got to bring this, these kind of things up, Joey. Because if you know just even half of those shots land, it changes the entire dynamic of the round, right? Like two players could be falling down. The push on the site is much less likely. The retake is more, you know, has more potential. So yeah, I think you've got to call it as you see it, and we'll let it again with the orb. Four and eight, not necessarily the greatest start for him. His team are four to four, but again, remember this is a CT-sided map. This is Efrag's choice of map. This is one of the maps that can play aggressively on the CT side, so therefore they are stronger on the CT side, I would say, as well than other maps. Oh, what? How does Blade survive that? And he manages to survive as well by pushing back. There is no justice in the world right now, I'm just saying. Nah, the wall pen is the next big thing in CSGO. Changes. You heard it here first. I honestly don't understand why that one patch came out in the first place, and oh my gosh, Davikos was so blind. One of the uh, top 10 performances of the flashbang dance. So I'm, I'm sure Bondic and World Edit are already thinking about saving these guns. And Blade maybe will post for an exit. He does have armor that would be worth saving. And he gets cut off by a spy leader, so never mind. They're going to be hunted down. I mean, the player going to peek out wide. World Edit, nice shot. And while you're hitting a shot, it's kind of a, it's a garbage kill, as we would say. Uh, but, after a round of missing so many shots, to kind of just warm back up and hit one there, that's maybe got to feel somewhat good. Yeah, it's got to build the confidence a bit, for sure. And, uh, uh, he's going to be around either way to you, Frag. But he will go down. When will he see an op again? I don't think anytime soon. Look how broken they are. And once more, it's, it is Bondic who has saved that armor and AK. Let's see if he takes it into a different position. He once again has that forward spawn, so he could peek out aggressive to the fountain. But I'd almost like to see him try something different. Maybe even go down in the uh, the blue door connector area. Or just hold off in the bathrooms. Yeah, orp being dropped is, is pretty significant, you know, overall. Sorry, I need to sneeze really bad. <laughs> yeah, I was take like, what? For a second. Oh, because uh, I'm sick still. I just keep sneezing all the time. It sucks. Transmit that. I'll, I'll be sure to, to sneeze in your direction, Joey, so you can have Please this don't. beautiful. I'll have to travel quite a distance, in fairness. I have not gotten uh, sick from either of the lands that I've been to, which I'm pretty fortunate. So, where did Bondic end up taking this gun? He took it into B, so they, they definitely stacked on the B site, and I like that. Instead of just, you know, four pistols over a B and have the, the AK hold its own site, they put the AK with the pistols and have actually just Blade, who has nothing spot on the A site. I think that's a good approach. Yeah, definitely a solid approach here. Let's see. I think our observer just uh, had a game crash Crashed or something. Out, yeah. yeah. I was staring at a wall for a little while. Dav cost and... Bondic are both going to be coming in now, trying to retake this site, but I feel like Bondic just wants to save his AK. There's no reason for him to keep pushing forward here. And Efrag are oh, going to have six rounds and keep all five players alive, so this is a fantastic T side for them so far. And the woes from the CTs continue because they have very little funds to play with going through into the next round as well, Joey. It's going from bad to worse for Flipside. Yeah, and this is not a map like, uh, like Cobble that we saw in our first series where you're expecting the terrorist side to kind of be in the lead. And I mean, the fact that Efrag has already got to six rounds, I mean, that's like where you want to be. Terrorists win. Uh, to finish off the half, you know, six as the, the terrorist to the nine of the CT is not going to be too shabby, but Efrag, of course, will have potential for some more. Flip side probably will buy here looking at their money. Um, and actually, I guess it won't be too bad since Bondic once again saved that AK, so that thing's practically an antique at this point. And honestly, without it, they would have had a really poor rifle round here and maybe have even saved again. Oh, yeah, it's was, big that Bondic's been holding on to that gun. I was honestly, honestly expecting that they would need to, to save or even have like a couple of, of lower grader weapons here. But that's not the case, so this is a, a decent enough buy. But we've already seen them in other rifle rounds still squander these opportunities, right? And even with better buys than this with orbs. So it doesn't necessarily fill me with confidence for flip side. They've got three incendiaries as well, so they need to use these ones. Here comes the push on the short blades in the good position, holding the close angle. Completely catches them off guard. Two frags for him. He gets traded out. Here's Davkos 
bubble with one new spin to gets a second, gets it on the second time of asking, and really keeps E-Frag in this round. A key moment for Flipside to I just shut off. up this. And the Molotovs are going to force Flipside now to come through to the danger side, but Flipside pick up the rounds and will indeed get themselves back on the board again and keep two AK. So it's allow the economy to build up, but again, they're in that similar nightmare scenario for Flipside where you've just won a round. But now you're definitely second best in terms of equipment, because Efrag had like ten thousand dollars across the board to spend. Yeah, indeed. Looks like our cameraman's back. CSGO crashed, so he's back into the thick of it now. And yeah, the Famasa and Markov is maybe a little worrying and Man, that also happened the last round. If that was just like a second earlier, would it have them both trapped in graffiti when instead they push out in front of it? But here we go. Are the entries about to come out? Davkos able to get to Bubble was so close, but he does not know that because he was very blind. Here comes Dreamer, uh, coming out, I guess, fourth out of Monster now. Finds one kill, campering down Davkos, who is good for three, surviving on 12 HP, and it's Spine Leader in one versus four right now. Gonna come Sandbags. The Beast Smoke Doss got a bit of a. An avenue to work with that's gonna funnel him through. Nice little spray down on the man in the window. That's world edit, but Bondic finds him out through the smoke. 6-6. Six, six. We've all tied up, and now Efrag are gonna be the the team that is still really rich, so never mind. Yeah, they've just been building up the money, building up the money. And so Efrag will keep coming back at you. Will let it with your needs to start getting more frags here on overpass the field. Whoever is playing super aggressive with spawns like this, this may tell, tell us a lot about his confidence if it's running low. It's still running high, I think, because he's gone for this early trade. He's like, screw it, I've got a good spawn, I want to get myself in the action, and there we go. Much better for him. And instantly takes a lot of the pressure off Flipside's shoulders. They can now fan out, play a bit more calm, a bit more passive. Blades taking control, connect to this world edit again. Nice this shot. is much better from him. Yeah, very quick reaction speed from him there to pick up that second kill. Well, the Molotov was thrown to tree, and I'm sure he noticed that, so that gives him a bit of an indication to, to really focus and expect someone to be there. Uh, but yeah, still a hard shot regardless. So he's he's good for two. Blade now finding the third. Just NKL and Dreamer alive for Efrag. Got the bomb, they're outside of B, but what can they really do? NKL, where is he at? Once again at the bottom, he's been having a pretty rough day. We'll smoke off the, the catwalk. Dreamer's actually brought down Davkos. I mean, there have been some 2v4s, 2v5s today. Dreamer's even planting the bomb, so again, with that money coming in, they'll be able to most likely have another rifle round or some sort of a, a broken buy-up coming into round 14, assuming they don't want to save and, and wait for the final round of the half. Here's Dreamer with another nice shot, one on three now, as NKL did fall. Spots one in sandbags, spots one in the pit. And that's Bondic that finds the kill. Well, Flipside at least are finishing strong here. It was looking a bit sticky for them for a little while there in the, in the mid half. When they lost those three rounds in a row, I was thinking the worst may come into fruition, but fair play to them. They have steadied this one somewhat. Still low e frag getting the bomb plants consistently down and therefore are keeping the AKs in rotation. Well, let it. How's his spawn looking this time? Not quite as good. And he's got a half decent spawn for B if he wants to push on. Looks like that's going to be the case here. Maybe dropping down into Monster. That's typically the route that you're going to take if you're going to have that quick peek. And it looks like that's the case. And oh, this could be bad for Dreamer. Well, I thought for a second he was going to peek that. And then had he have peeked it, he would have been a dead man. Well, that would have had him comfortably. That could still happen here. He's given his position away by spraying through. Well, then it goes for the peek and picks off the kill. Oh, you could see that happening from a mile away. And well, then it really is starting to feel it right now. He stepped up big time. Yeah, well, maybe Dreamer couldn't because he didn't have an op, but certainly figured it out. Once the bullet connected, that's five on four. Once again, World Edit going to start his team off with a man advantage. And Flipside have been looking real strong the last couple rounds, which is good because their half is looking pretty weak until right now. Um... So, Efrag grouping up and gonna hit a different site this time. Starting to make that noise. A catching a man jumping, World Edit taking some damage, having missed an op shot now. We'll go out with his flash. Botch smoke, it looks like, coming in. This will give World Edit something to aim through. Again, it won't be the easiest shot. 
Well, maybe he won't have to make it. Bondix so far stopping them from entering. Finds a kill and walking in. Yep, right into the crosshair. That was NKL. Bondix takes down Bubble and now it's just Victor trying to hide. Does take down Bondix who is behind Optimus. But immediately Davkos is there with the kill. 8-6 to six, going into the last round of the half right now. and Money's still in a somewhat okay position for Efrag, but I don't know from what we've seen. It looks like Flipside flip will be pretty okay to just close this out 9-6 in the first half. And one of the really huge things about getting the early picks from all that its perspective in these rounds is that on a T side, where utility is so important, if you're losing a player in the first 5, 10, 15 seconds, you're dropping those grenades. Like, that's utility instantly deleted off the map. So that can really hurt you when the execution starts to come into fruition, if you even get to that point. So it's, it's important to mention, like, well, that it's... Frags have been very, very important. They have definitely been impact kills. Streamers coming in, trying to get the spray into effect. There's the first frag. He knows that Bondic is still on this side of the truck. And there's Bondic for two kills. He's come out for three. Did get a dink onto Bubble. So much damage done. Now, World Edit is stuck on the site. He knows the bomb is going down, but it can't do much through the smoke. He's still alive, though, somehow. And has a molly, a smoke, and a flashbang to play with. Here comes the cavalry. It has arrived. Davkos needs to check his tight right. Or he could be falling down. And indeed he should be for the tech line. No, he's not. Markolov. Right from the back. And now suddenly the terrorists in a bit of a bad position. They're both over here. This is where the Molotov and the smoke really help. And just like that, Mark 11 World let it move in and take it down. A lot of that kind of falling onto NKL, right? If he brings down Davkost immediately, it's three on two the other way, but kind of whiffing those Tech 9 shots as Davkost moved up and didn't even check the close right. So 9 6, that's where it will end. Now Efrag are going to have to go over to the CT side, which might be a little bit more difficult for them, although they did mount a pretty solid CT side on train. But they got off to a fantastic start. Now the question is whether or not they'll be dependent on that fantastic start to still have a solid CT side. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? Like, you, you look at EFRAG, at one point they were 6-4 ahead on their T side, and you're thinking, this is this is getting really bad for flip side. But all the credit in the world to flip side for taking the last five rounds there on the half, putting it 9-6, put a competitive scoreline up there. And we've already discussed before that EFRAG CT side sometimes is a bit creaky, it is a bit iffy. I do feel that CT side overpass is pretty strong though across the board and this is going to be a tough ask for flip side, but at least they've given themselves an opportunity to maybe take this one home now. If we're going in and the roles reverse and flip side only had six rounds going through into T, I'd, I'd be thinking this game's over. But now it's anybody's matchup. Yep, so just waiting on some uh, players to ready up. To get on with it. Let's see, where do we go? Who, who's got the... Who's dropping the bomb so far? Pi Leader and NKL, pretty far down there. Uh, once again, Dreamer with 15 kills, Victor with 14, and Bubble with 12. These are really are the three standout, like, absolute star fraggers for this team. Um, so, always nice to see. And, well, Davkost had a, had a rough game on train for a while. Kind of went uh, untested on the CT side, didn't get to get too many kills. And then, uh, even on the T side, didn't mount uh, all that much. But here he is, starting off. Of course, he had that one ace over in the ace site. So, he's 12 and 10. Bondix 11 and 8, 11 and 12 for World Edit, who has had some pretty sick rounds, uh, but also had a round where he missed quite a few op shots. But he he's really the big part of what allowed Flipside to make this comeback, this run of five rounds uh, late on here in the first half, because he just found an opening pick on almost every single one of those. Yeah, opening picks, entries, whatever you want to call it. I and think then Markovov's be... clutches. Whew. Yeah, yeah, that too. Definitely. The, the Deagle one in particular was just disgusting. But I think entry kills are pretty much going to be the theme of this map here for Flipside. That's exactly what they're going to need. They're going to need the Bondics of this world to, to really step up and to pull off the, the entries onto the sites. Markolov has already been showing some, some huge individual plays, but by and large they've been, you know, sparks. Other than that, he's been quite quiet. You know, 8 for 8, not fantastic score. Same on train as well. He wasn't top fragging for his team. So, I'm not sure what to make of this one. Davkost is definitely livened up, though. He had a very poor train. He's already got more kills on this map than he did on the entirety of train. Mm -hmm. So, that's good news for Flipside, at least. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with Bondic. Like, when this roster first came together with the, what they have right now, it was Bondic who was... I mean, they played a lot of cash throughout the Pro Placement Tournament and early on here in the Season 8 Pro League, but Bondic was just, like, it seemed like carrying this team. Like, it was Bondic and Davkos that we kept talking about. 
And that's kind of shifted back again towards uh, some of the bigger and the more old school names like uh, Mark 11 World Edit now. I agree. Bondic was one of those guys. Um, we highlighted him at the start of this game as well. Like he has the potential to just carry a game. Like that. That's how good he is. We feel he's kind of an underrated player, and he's not necessarily played bad. I don't think in his best of two, but he's he's not quite been hitting the, the heights that I'm expecting from him. And maybe this is his half to show what he's made of. Flipside going for a slow push here towards B. You can see Markov trying to hold down connector. Bondic's pushing through with the rest of his team. That Molotov. Very smart, I've got to say, from Flipside. Throw them a lot of, stops them from coming through connector. It pretty much secures them this bomb flag. And now it's all on the retake from the E-Frag. There's the first frag for Spy Leader. Dreamers came in as well, the P2000. These are two huge kills for them. Still that bomb is sticking away. There's a Molotov in the hands of Markov. He's going to get a chance to use it, though. He's the last player. He's completely out of position. I don't think E-Frag realized what? this. And he's dead. Rip. Okay, that was weird. I, did you, were you watching Dreamer? He just, like, I thought he lagged out. Nah, that's what you mark He's good. Victor with the 3k on the round, and that's kind of funny, right? That Molotov stops that initial push in from E-Frag, kind of keeps him bunched up there, and you don't often see, especially on a pistol round, uh, the bomb go down and it's still 5 on 5. Yeah, but I, but, but I think at that point, like, 5 on 5 in the B site, there's not even enough room for the terrorists to all sit in there together, so it seems like the, the retake is almost quite probable, and it, it happens there for E-Frag. I think the key frag there is, um, I think it was Dreamer, with the P2000 frag. that came down. Um, if he doesn't get that first kill, it allows a terrorist to then push through and get like a really good position on the site. But he did get the kill, so... Hypotheticals. What, was what was Bubble floating on over there at Long A? Is there like uh, a weird thing on the wall that you can like slow your descent with? That was kind of strange. Or I'm really, I'm not even lagging, though my ping's actually really good right now. That was weird. Maybe I'm just losing my mind. But Losing this is the uh, straight up eco round here from Flipside Tactics. They've bought what four, three P250s. You can see that man jumping. You know, jumping for information now is a little bit scarier. Actually, quite a bit scarier than it used to be. Not that it's easily punished, but trying to work right into A main up those steps, and it is a blender. You frag chop them all down. Get yourself some uh, some minced tactics. Now that is a ballsy play for me, Fred, because let, let's say hypothetically that Flipside go for the Force Spy and they pick up a Scout. Those are the kind of kills that a Scout is going to be looking for, those kind of jumps. You know, just the one tap potential. If someone's got a Deagle, same kind of thing for uh, Flipside. And we've already seen Markolov using Deagle a lot today, so it would have been out of the realms of possibility. But Efrag, do you get the information? They do get the round and Flipside saving up after that first round defuse to get themselves AKs. Five smokes as well, so... Definitely a possibility we're going to see an execute come on towards likes of a Duff cost playing interference maker maybe on B to try and be a pain in the backside while the rest of flip side look for a pick onto the A side. But Efrag playing it slow. Only Victor really with an aggressive position and he's more there for scouting I feel than a frag. Like if you land a frag with that little room, you have the reactions of a god. It's Akuma. really that simple. Pretty much. So instead he gets the information, pulls back. Much smarter play. Doesn't really tell Efrag a lot overall though, because there's so much time to play with and they don't have control of the connector. So for all they know, like he spots a player in mid and they instantly just go through connector towards B. So you still have to be on the tiptoes here from Efrag's perspective. Now some nades and smokes actually going out from the CTs. Try to stop flip side from grabbing uh, full control of construction. Not really where they are right now. They still still have a man in blue doors, that's Markov. Uh, Bondic there right in behind him, but this Dav Cost Blade and World Edit all making their way to the outside of Monster, and it'll be up the Dreamer on the other side of it here in the B Canal. We saw him play this position yesterday, and it's really funny if you go third person. He is straight up levitating here in the corner, but it's it's such a strong spot. And while it might take a while to get there, you've got to smoke that off, use some utility to get into that position. I, I have yet to see it fail the first time Dreamer is into it. What I'm saying is, I'm going to use that. Do it. In the pugs. I'm going to rack some scrubs in the in pugs. In the pugs. Exactly. So flip side, after a, a pretty nice comeback on the last quarter of the first half, with five rounds in a row, have lost the first three, and that includes that rifle round, so... Ufrag 
definitely starting off well here on their CT side. NKL is the player that needs to maybe shift through the gear somewhat. But then again, if Dreamer, Victor, and Bubble are all firing, maybe he doesn't need to. Maybe he just needs to be there and lay down the support now and again, get a couple of assists, a couple of frags, and that could be his job well and truly done. You can see Bubble shifting to the burst fire. You don't often see that with the FAMAS, but very good accuracy onto World Edit, and he's been dropped. Here comes the push in, Bondic, the rest of his team coming through, Bondic taking the back position, maybe watching out for the potential rotation through connector. The e frag on the site in perfect positions will not get drawn out by Molotov's flashes, throws, HEs, nothing. So this is going to be as easy round as you could ask for. And there we go, e frag. Do not lose a single player. Well, if you read the weapon description of the FAMAS, it says that the burst is better for long range. But yeah, you definitely do not see it in CSGO, pretty much ever. I feel like if, if they're against a, a buy-up there of like AKs or something, you can see that burst. burst. Yeah, yeah, he's only doing that because the disrespect, not not towards the player, just the fact he only had a pistol. So I think you can afford to go for that peak. But in this round, for example, NKL with a FAMAS, it's not going to happen. Like If you see the AK come around the corner, you're just going to back away, call it out to the rest of the team and then just hide. Oh, they got the first wow. frag again. Flip side. Just, already down. They are struggling here on the T side. Really no way struggling. world it lives. It was so Maybe. blind. A lot of good peek oh. on him. Victor over in the connector. Finds Markalov lurking back there trying to keep the Terra's control of it. It's Blade who will even it up. He brings down Bubble. So three on three. Victor is low from that one kill that he got. I guess onto Bondic. Flash on NKL, and World Edit starting to uh, slide up. Yeah, short side of A, Dav cost and Party, and Blade's actually in a bit of a fight with NKL. He's already pretty uh, established there in long. The Molotov will go through to buy some time. NKL thinks it's safe to reload, but World Edit is there and will kill him. And Blade around the side, having pushed out long, that's A for the taking. And even though Efrag started off this round really, really strong with that opening pick, and then another one. That streamer all alone in a one versus three will just have to save and maybe won't even be able to do that. Yeah, definitely going to try and save these weapons, I feel, from Efrag's perspective. Dreamer. I mean, maybe he feels like he, he could go and pick up some kills, but for me, like, what, what's the outcome now? What's the best case scenario? That you take a couple kills away from Flipside? Surely you're not going to get the defuse in a 1v3 with that time remaining. I... I They've got the economy, but still, I would have preferred them to just save there. If that's me, I'm saving that weapon. And this is what I was talking about before as well, when we mentioned about Bubble. His, he's normally going to go for the assault rifle over the AWP, and, and that's what we're seeing here. He had more than enough money to go for the AWP if he wanted to, but instead goes for the M4, full assault rifle buy-up. And just standard kind of uh, approach as well from Efrag. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I could, I could see posting up to try to get some exits, but I don't think that was like a, a great place to post up when you're kind of still pushing forward. You're not really posted if you're pushing forward towards the site. Uh, because another kill would have actually kind of hurt Flipside. Like, they buy up here and everyone's somewhat poor. I guess only Blade has 3k, and you know, imagine Blade has to drop an AK, then you see this money, and instead of Blade having 3k, he's got 300. So that would have been a pretty substantial difference, and I guess the economy was good enough. But obviously, saving would have been better than dying with no kills. Either way, kind of the nitpicky on that a bit, but it's the AK's limited, uh, yeah, I, I would give them more or less the full utility here for Flipside. They got those Molotovs and, I don't know, without, with all the Molotovs, I might want to work in for a, uh, a set taken to the B site, you know, Molotov the barrels, BD, and try to get in there, but they are very, very A-focused right now. Some smoke's coming out, can you obviously put the Molotovs to use over here as well, but Victor on the outside wall of the bathroom, still playing in a Pretty cheeky one kill spot, and Bubbles right there as well. Catches Bondic as he pulls out that grenade, and then pulls out his own and gets caught. And now there's Victor, finds one. Fire leader behind the site, can't get nothing. Mark Lava kill before that, then World Edit. NKL and Dreamer, two on three retake. Bank is on fire right now. Dreamer working his way up the stairs. There's a man on Optus, and a man to Dreamer's left. He will check that, he headshots in. Mark Lava just, just slithers around the side of the truck, and then World Edit finds two. Much better from flip side, just what they needed. Two rounds in a row is going to give them some momentum, but more importantly, in a lot of cases, it takes that economy away from Efrag. 
You're on the force by now. Two for masses, three for masses actually. Just one defuse kit. Could potentially be two if Victor wants to go for it as well. One's probably good enough to work with in these kind of situations, especially if they want to look forward to the future and get more weapons under their belt. This, this does leave them a bit hampered in terms of grenades. Well, the hands of will let it again. Markolov looking for the information down there, just a millimeter to work with. Aggressive push up from Bubble behind the first rock. And just peeks down. That was perfect timing as well. I don't think they spotted him. And in doing so, that kind of baited Will let it out. I feel like Blade went for the look. He didn't spot it. He looked towards the ground. May have called like it's clear. Will let it peek and then gets taken out. So, so crucial for me, Frag. I don't think they got a hand on the AWP though. It was in the smoke and a bit too far out of reach. So Flipside did not have that to work with either. Good start from Efrag. Yep, and timing can be everything. As I mean, to hide behind that rock, you have to do as he did. Just kind of sit right behind it at the at the high spot, and even look at the ground. So it's not like you can peek, and that's generally why uh, someone will go to the tree to help out. Uh, but it does work out. Finds that first kill, five on four right now. As Efrag looked to go ahead and tie it up, and, and Efrag have been involved. I feel like the first twenty rounds of every Efrag game we've covered in the last, well, I mean, yesterday and today has like been this close for this long and this is where it starts it either stays close or separates at this point yeah i think that's actually a good point that you raise this is typically where they they started to just fade away yesterday it's titan in particular but here we go they landed the frag but the bomb has been planted a two versus three dab plus chimes in and he's been picked off so he frag just an all-out duel to the death Pick up the kills, get the bomb defused, and Efrag could be calling this for technical. I feel like this is probably a technical timeout rather than a tactical one, because they just won that round. Yeah, technical seems more likely. Uh, but again, unsure. Maybe they're trying to spend some more time to get a better read and talk a little bit more about what's happening here. And oh, I don't know, probably not DDoS, right? Smiley has been having trouble like the last three days. But hopefully it won't be too much of a delay, because I might not be with us much longer if uh, this gets delayed. <laughs> you need to head off and get yourself some grub. Uh, yeah, see the weird thing is, like, I ate more food than I normally do today, and I'm, like, more hungrier than usual, and I don't even understand. The body is weird, man. Hmm. Kevin, well, you already gave Efrag the best knife prize yesterday, so shouldn't you... Oh, I guess you are. Just checking out flip side, that makes sense. I'm not even sure what kind of knives Flipside have. I think some Karambits on there, isn't there? I don't know. Or Karambit. How do you say it again? I, I remember we said this differently. You said... I don't Karambit. know. I, uh, Karambit. 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 Uh, come on, that's more fun. You sound so, like, Southern there, though. Like, Southern American, I feel. I mean, I am Southern. Well, yeah, you're from Florida, but I mean, like, Texas. No, nah, Florida's, like, the North. Um... Geographically speaking, it's in the south, of course. Well, okay, so northern Florida is like deep, deep south. But then once you get into the top of Florida, the more south you go, culturally, you actually go more north. Kind of weird. That's so strange. Yeah. I mean, Miami is like essentially New York to Because you think like, so many people from like the northeast retire in southern Florida. So that's why, like, southern Florida is more like the north. Like, a lot of the cultures, so many people from New York, and obviously a lot of tourists as well. Ah, uh, okay. And then, like, somewhere like Jacksonville is, like, straight up the south. Like, oh, cause the north you're eating of... chicken and biscuit and gravy, like, for breakfast <laughs> every day. And it's so good. The north of Florida, doesn't that um, border with Georgia? Yeah, Georgia and, um, God, I'm going to sound really ignorant. Alabama? I think, yeah, Alabama on the panhandle. Right, got ya. Florida's actually in two time zones, which blew my mind. Wait, like, really? I didn't really think of Florida as being that big, yeah. Uh, a little bit of the panhandle is in the uh, in the central time zone, and now we're back from East Coast. That's really weird. That's, I guess that's even more weird for someone like myself, who's from the UK, because... You guys are like lot, one, right? Yeah, quite a lot of people live here, and it's all off one time zone. I don't know what the population though. of Florida is, so I'm no idea. I'd imagine I have it's no quite idea a lot. either. A couple mil? By a couple, probably like a couple ten mil. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Can we do backup? That's not a good sign for no. Frog. Oh, no, no. He means, can we back up the server? Oh, I thought there. he meant, can we have a substitute? I was like, please. Oh, I thought you meant... Never mind. It means back up the server, I guess. That's what I thought you meant the first time, but even still. Uh, population's like just under 20 million. Damn. That's What's more than UK? I expected. Uh, well, for England, I think it's like 60 million. I think. Don't. Uh, I could be completely off. For the entire United Kingdom, I'm not sure. Probably not too much more, right? I'm sure my ignorance right now. I may have to Google this. I'm already doing it. Uh, 64.1 million for the UK. Right, okay. That was in 2013, though. We can probably add a few more. Why do we always get these pauses? Um, because we cover esports. Like, what? Do you, how is that even a real question? Do you get these many pauses with other people? Um, yeah, I generally. Feel like cursed. Oh, okay. Then you're the one that's cursed. Yeah, probably. It's just me. Is it my fault that I do everything around here? <laughs> nah, just Shots. kidding. Actually, our producer is uh, generally involved in more of uh, the casts, or like way to put it, like more maps, I guess, than I am, since he a lot of times does the Europe and NA production, whereas I just cast Europe. Yeah, but Alex could literally start the stream as soon as we get into map, can just go sleep and then That's come true. back like an hour later. I've actually Wait. done that while producing, <laughs> and he's good to go because we have an observer. Like we've got Kevin, who's observing. So yeah, if you just have auto director, you can't go anywhere because auto director decides to uh, go full stupid Indeed. pretty often. Uh, I think Kevin, our cameraman, also handling the uh, match medic or whatever they're doing. It's great banter, it really is. Yeah, I'm sorry, I don't have much to work with today. I'm like so low on energy. I don't want it to be like a helium pity party cast, but Oh. Give you a hug if I could. But I'm pretty no, sure you no. prefer food. I don't want a hug. I yeah. want food. I want food. I still want to play ping pong because actually tonight I gotta do the uh North American broadcast, so Um hello, is table tennis? Hello? Whatever, dude. Is that really everyone says? I mean, I guess you guys invented it, right? Well, my understanding is that table tennis and ping pong actually have different rules. I think ping pong is where is is that where you have to keep hitting both sides of the table? Nah. A lot of people think that, but that's like just straight up not the rules. Okay. Rip. I mean, I call it ping pong. I play by the official like like international like the ITT international table tennis like regulations. Generally, I don't think the ITT like we. I still play like you can't lose on serve, but other than that, I follow the rules. And sometimes we'll play. Uh, I mean, the old rules used to be play five, like you serve five in a row and you play to twenty-one. But in recent years, they switched to serve by two, play to eleven, which I actually think is more fun. Then you can play best of threes a little bit quicker. I don't know. I feel like you'd be quite good at table tennis or ping pong. Because you're a I tennis am. player as well, right? I mean, I'm a terrible tennis player. I'm way better at table tennis. Hmm. But uh, I'm working on it. I'm pretty coordinated, you know. I've played video games my entire life. I like, <laughs> think that's helped. It's finally useful for something. Yep. I have no idea what's going on on the server there. That when they ready up, does it just automatically go back to 11-11? Yeah, it should. Or 11-10, whatever they wanted the medic to. I wasn't really paying attention. So, if you just join us, ladies and gents, this is the best of two between Flipside and Efrag. First map went to Flipside, although it was a pretty ridiculous comeback on train, 16-14 in the end. And now we are about to jump into the second map. Second half, 11-11 will be the scoreline, I believe, unless there's more issues, because I think Blade just DC'd, which is fantastic. Too many deaths. Everyone dies on the match medic, which is really funny. So maybe uh, Blade's PC crashed, or maybe Blade just left to get a pause in so that their coach, Jonsa, could rejoin. Looks like everyone's happy and everyone's ready to go, so hopefully 
we can get this going because I mean, Efrag has been putting on uh, a bit of a show the last couple days. Started off strong against Hellraisers, kind of faltered at the end there against Titan. Titan was looking a little bit on tilt even in the first map, but they showed up big for the second and kind of just closed it out. And then even here today, Efrag uh, pushing train to the full 30 rounds, flip side 116 14, and then still, you know, the jury is out on overpass. What's going to happen? We're tied up. We're still paused. We're tied up with a double meaning. Um. Well, here comes your pause. I, I completely missed that altogether. I was like, oh, we're still going to be paused forever. Here comes your pause, though. 11 11, as you can see, both teams are only running with weapons, albeit just a tech nine in the hands of Davkos. Couple of Galils as well for flip side. This is a full committed round, though, from Efrag. And again, it's going to be the same position used from Victor, just looking up, peeking up, as with Markolov. Just going again with the game of millimeters for CSGO. Dream up. Eats a bit of damage from that grenade, but it's not too much to deter him. He's still going to tap across through Monster. And a pretty standard round for the flip side. They don't have the most energetic or explosive of T strats, but it's been uh, pretty effective these last couple rounds, so you understand why they're running with it here again. So bomb down flip side. Looking for a pick, looking for some information. Then they can get that bomb up and decide to hit a site. As assuming it goes in their favor, this information gathering phase of the round. And I mean, the time for that's kind of passing. So yeah, they scoop up the bomb, they'll slide back towards B. They got two men, that's Bondic and Markolov coming out the blue door. So that will set up the two, three split onto the site. And it looks like some smokes uh, will be coming out to follow this take. Oh, Markolov has spotted one though. And I guess as a result, you know, NKL spotted one of you. If he, even if he hasn't, he's got the information because he has been shot at. There's a Molotov to barrels, you gotta expect more Molotovs raining down on the site. That one's actually from a CT though, and that's gonna block the entrance. Three people down here in this pit. Could get a bit dicey. The NKL's pushed through that wall of smoke uh, on Graffiti. Spy Leader's found another, he's brought down by Davkos. Victor's still down there and a man up in the window. Will drop down, almost dies! He almost grazes himself, and that was Victor. He's finally brought in by World Edit, who then hits another shot over the barrels, and I thought for a second World Edit might just be hitting another ridiculous clutch. But Bubble is there, comes in with the last kill to defuse, and the teammates for e Frank to take the lead. Man, I'm not even playing in this game, and my heart was going crazy there for e Frank because like that should have been easy, easy round for them. With a three on one, like eight seconds to play with, bomb goes down. You're expecting just the, the play to come in and the easy kills. I was going to say before, I think Flipside may fancy their chances of going for the force buy because Flipside did take four weapons away from Efrag in that last round with World Edit getting that one on two. So it's the idea of breaking the economy for Efrag. However, this is a very risky play from Flipside as well. If they lose this, they're going to have a poor force buy up next round potentially, maybe even an eco, maybe even like Tech 9 Kevlar and wait for the. Higher funds to rain on in, so this could be a one for two round for Efrag, which would take them to maybe even 14 1. So, what flip side got in store? They keep playing these standard slow rounds, I just don't see them getting anything out of this map. They need to speed things up. Yeah, let's uh, see what they're gonna do. There's the bomb picked up already going back towards B again. This time they just got P252 Tech 9s. Galil and an AK, so not a whole lot in this round either. Looking at the money. Uh, it's not good, and the last bonus isn't all that high yet. This will just mark three rounds in a row. Maybe they can plant the bomb one more time. Planted it in the last two rounds. Well, it's kind of a, a amazing they even have as much money as they do. Bubbles taking some damage, but he hasn't gone down, and well, flip sign still just waiting. And here it is, another set execute onto the B sign. And Kale, again, going to push right out in front of the smokes. This time the Molotov is not there to block Bondic, but he'll try to push out. Spots and KL. Another man pushing through the smoke. Blade takes Spyleader down immediately, and then Bondic gets a shot almost through the floorboards, helping out on that kill. Markov grabs the third, and this take much, much more successful. And I gotta wonder why. I mean, the same type of strat is coming out from Flipside. How come Efrag doesn't have that same uh, incendiary grenade to block off the uh, block off the uh, sandbags? Yeah, but maybe just a bit of a misplay, honestly, overall from uh, from them. But you can see that that force by really just paying out for Flipside, paying out dividends for them because Efrag now on the cusp of a an eco they've gone for the force. Oh man, what's what do they get out of this? This this is the question. Like force buys, you have to think, what do we get out of this force buy? Do we have something to fall back on, 
Or if we beat our enemies, do they then go into an economic yeah, downturn? Yeah, they might have to. But they don't really get anything out of this, though, Joey. Like, if they win this round, Flipside can still buy. Two players are pretty decent. Two of them are low, but you can almost guarantee that they'll go for, like, Tech 9's armor. Yeah, it'll, it'll else. probably be another Force Buy guarantee from Flipside. But... Whereas if Free Frag lose this round, then they're in another situation like this where they may have to Eco or Force Buy. So if you just bite the bullet this round and go for the Eco, you have a stronger buy coming up soon. Mm. So I, I just I can't wrap my head around this. This is where we, we talk about this before, that sometimes E-Frag are their own worst enemies, and I feel this is one of those rounds. Yeah, it definitely could be. Could be the one that comes back to bite them, and they've already lost that first man. Victor goes down, bubbles on 8 HP, and you know, that's what that's what they've taken on E-Frag. And look at flip side, it's just Markov has lost some HP, it's down to 62. Spy Leader, oh, has a couple lined up, but can't quite find a kill. Some, some more damage done, but 5 on 3 right now. Once again, the same sort of set take, just raining down fire and smoke. And you know, might as well add in some Brimstone there uh, onto the B site. Looks like flip side will have... Got themselves another round, 13 to 12, and okay, well, it's not as bad now if they can hold on and kind of use this force by twice. But what I'd like to see Flipside do, and what I think they're realizing is seeing, well, that it just taking point going super aggressive, is that they need to chase these weapons. That they need to just take these weapons away from Efrag. And I wouldn't be too surprised if that's what we see happen here. Dream has been tagged down super low down to six. Dream is, yeah, I mean, uh, Dreamer gets information, eight, but he's also giving information away. Yep. Okay, so Flipside playing this more safe. I mean, the money was pretty low. Indeed. So that bomb plant, you can see how much money they have in their back pocket, though. 6k, 5.3k, 5.8k. So, this does give Efrag a chance to make these weapons work, and is this going to bait them into another force buy? It actually could. It nah, I don't, I don't even think they're that crazy. Okay, but as you can see, like, even if they, they eco this round, go through into the next round, they're still not going to have fantastic economy. Like, it's going to be up to, what, 4k or something? That, that's really not Yeah, it's great. not going to be good. So that, that's why that force buy really surprised me, and I just do not agree with it at all. Well, the next round they can force buy, uh, try to force buy for the win, because Flipside will have 14, and then at that point the bonus should be stacked up enough, and maybe even if you, it's obvious you're going to lose kind of early, save two armors. Uh, and then have a rifle round and, and try to play to win, uh, or play to tie, excuse me, because you'd have 12, they'd have uh, 15. Mm, so, I don't know, some scenarios. That none of them seem super hopeful, but... I mean, it, it's pretty close coming down the home stretch, so it's possible. Well, this this is another important one for Efrag. Just some kills may, may make the difference, put some extra money in their back pocket to buy up weapons. And they go for the stack, they go for the... Opportunistic play, but it's not worked for them. Davkos with two is going to stop the initial charge around the back of Connector, and then the other three are going to be uh, just trying to save. They've all got Kevlar, they've all got pistols, and so this is the right call. But uh, again, this puts them in a really bad place. And if they run into Blade, and he can take off some of these kills, it's going to go from bad to worse. Here we go, he's going to spray down. Can't get much done, so that could be an AK now saved to free frag, and this is going to be a lot better for them. This is what they're hoping for. They're just Maybe not. An effect from Davkos, but here comes the Deagle and the P250. They're still losing players, and again, this is going to favor flip side. They can easily buy back up next round. If Dreamer can hold on to this AK, though, that is a minor victory in itself. And Man, if only they both so. gone the ladder route, they would have had two AKs out of that. Indeed. That AK is pretty big, though. That's really big. He can now drop an M4 from us to somebody else, and that allows them to get full armors and just yeah, solid buys up. Yeah, guarantees two people pretty much with full armor and a, and a or sorry, armor, full nades, and a kit. Yeah. But you know, it's it, all things considered, it's still not a great buy, right? Because it's two from asses, no orbs, uh, a few grenades to play with, but definitely not as much as you'd like on the CT side. So again, you're going to see Bubble, and it's similar. When he had the FAMAS last time, if you remember, when he looked down at the right time, he's there again on Rock, and they've double-stacked this. But Spy Leader 8 damage from the AWP of World Edit. Oh, World Edit. He did connect on that shot. Flash goes out, but it doesn't actually blind Bubble very much. Bubble has him lined up. Somehow, World Edit's still able to hit the shot. And it's 4-on-4 four four now. E Frank still trying to hold on, spot manning at the tree. I think Spy Leader, I mean, at this point, he's committed to the fight. He won't even be able to fall off. 
there's not enough cover. He needs to either fall off immediately or, okay, whatever. He will get out, but I think he's pretty lucky to be alive. Agreed. Very, very fortunate. I was surprised that he kept uh, challenging up long for as long as he did. He knew the AWP was coming in and he was being tagged left, right, and center. So, for me, uh, definitely overstayed his welcome. And now this is the issue with this buy up. With 30 seconds to go, these are the moments where you want to be throwing out those smokes, you want to be throwing out those flashes, they only have two to play with. And that's two flashes as well, by the way, not smokes. Victor's in a good position to at least get a trade off. Here comes a Molotov slightly too far. Had that have been a couple of inches forward, Spyleader maybe even died from that. Release been forced out into the open. bonding has been picked off. These are good frags. 10 seconds to go. There's a second one. And somehow E frag. Live again. These are rounds that I would put money on Flipside winning. And they are just letting them slip. I mean, they were running low on time, and they, they had smokes and some molotovs. They used a few of the molotovs, but they don't actually throw any of the smokes down. If they had smoked off bank and uh, maybe even just the stairs, so they only have to contend with maybe one on the site and one behind the truck. They might have even thought the truck was clear since they did land that molotov behind it. But Efrank setting up in a, in a nice crossfire on their line of sight, not really blocked, so flip side tactics play the price there. And Efrag looking to tie it up here, and again, a, a game that could be going the full 30. Possibly more. I would not be surprised if we had overtime here. Would not be surprised whatsoever. But again, although the equipment value says this is even, of course you've got to take into account that the CTs will always have to spend more on things like diffuse kits and sentry grenades cost a bunch more as well, so this is definitely favouring flip side in terms of armoury and equipment. They do have the open play once more. Bomb has been dropped back, suggests it's kind of a pick comp here. But again, Efrag playing to their weapon strengths, and that's just hiding into the site, not peeking out too much. This is giving up long control and bathroom control, but they're okay with this. And you can also spot on the minimap that NKL is sneaking his way to the connector. It is so vitally important that Davkos keeps his eyes on connector. And he's been picked off from there. And there's the second frag from NKL. Two huge kills. He will be put down, but the damage has already been done, and now Will Let It has to push him with the drop. There's the first frag for him. He's back to wake. It's a second. Really should have been put up from Spy Leader. And that's all on Dream Runner 1v2, Joey, and surely he can't pull this off. I don't know. We've seen some pretty crazy clutches today, but as he approaches the truck, Bondic stops the plant and is able to get the kill on time. Spy Leader will be kicking himself right now. He should have had that kill on Will Let It. That would have changed everything in that round. Gonna force it up for Efrag. Of course, they have to. Two more rounds to save if they want to take us to, into overtime. And I feel like Flipside should have called this uh, economic situation as well. They should know what's happening. So react accordingly. Yeah, I mean, hard to even tell if they're reacting accordingly. The last couple rounds that Flipside have been playing, they've been pretty slow, keeping the bomb drop down, looking uh, and using this information phase. And I mean, no. Information is never as important as it is when you're going up against a CT force by trying to figure out where these people are. Bubble, yeah, see, he gets shot at, realizes they could be peeking up, and immediately falls back off into the site. Otherwise, you're forced to be stuck there and take that battle. And Spy Leader gonna get aggressive and he's gonna peek through, but Dabcock's waiting, will spot him and take no damage from that. Dreamer tries to spray through the smoke, but to no avail, it's a 5v4 in favor of Flipside as it like to close this out. Mm -hmm. For me, reacting accordingly there was to get five Molotovs because you know it's likely going to be pistols, and typically with pistols you want to hold close angles, yeah. and then and then play slow like Davkos did, like he played that perfectly. But I feel like they they skimmed out a tiny bit of Molotovs, but it, it could still work. They've got three Molotovs, they've got plenty of utility left. The fact that Dreamer goes looking with the one M4 for me is a bit of a mistake. I can understand why he'd do this though. But that cost them big. He sees the arm just sticking out, so Molotov is going to go down. That was so awkward. Very unfortunate that he got spotted there, but still. Oh, and oh was that a grenade drops the bomb, kill? yeah. Oh man, here's Victor close range. He should have had oh, that kill wow. again. That would have changed everything. Bubble now pushing through with the 5-7. The bomb has been planted. Oh, he the sees barrel. the barrel of the orc sticking through the smoke. And there's World that the trade comes out. Flip side, just about hold on. What a fantastically close best of two, though. Both maps almost going down to the wire. 16-14, 16-13, but flip side narrowly take it. Yeah, that they do. And I mean, Efrag putting on pretty good performances the last couple of days. Uh, kind of a team that you thought maybe, just maybe, could get in the top three, make it to land. But 
I think they'll be pretty happy to just stay in the middle of the pack. They won't make it to land, but they will avoid the relegation of being in the bottom four of the league. Um, I mean, it hurts to get no points today, but they did get one yesterday uh, up against Hellraisers and playing some of the harder matches. Hellraisers, Titan, and then flip side. Uh, so pretty well played to them. And of course, uh, earlier, uh, Dignitas taking down Lounge Gaming pretty much um, without much trouble. Yeah, the, the last best of two was, was pretty one sided, wasn't it? Lounge didn't really show up today, and Dignitas just showed their uh, their calibre, you know, showed that they are a team to be reckoned with and deserve to be towards the top of the leaderboard and definitely potentially getting themselves across to the land in NA. So, kind of worked out as we expected. I will say that I think Flipside and Efrag didn't necessarily go the way I expected in terms of both maps being so close. I thought that Train would be more of a block performance for Flipside. Yeah, same. But uh, that comeback, though, was pretty massive from them. Like, they were looking dead and buried at half time. So, huge credit to, to Flipside for getting that first map. All right, guys. So, that will conclude European coverage of the CMO MLG, CMO MLG Season 8 Pro League uh, today. We got more tomorrow. I think we got a triple header starting at uh, 6 p.m. Central European time. And then another best of two. And then two more best of twos, actually, after that. Uh, but coming up tonight in just about an hour and a half, we got Winter Fox versus CLG and Complexity versus Trifecta, which I think is the former Cosalus. Uh, so make sure to come back from that. Um, check out CSGO Lounge if you want to place any wagers on those matches. Uh, check out MSI as well if you're looking for any gaming laptops to take on the move. And then, of course, Alpha Draft. If you want to play Fantasy Esports for cash today, you can do that. Uh, I've been Helium with me, Metas. We'll see you tomorrow. Peace.